Welcome back to American Wing Chun. In this video, we're going to go over what I call the Sunam Tao workout. And that's where we take the movements from the Sunam Tao form. We do repetitions of each of the movements that has kind of a stretching uh, feel to it. So you get some range of motion in your joints and you start to learn how to move your body in a more Wing Chun type way. I have one of these kind of workouts for the Chum Q form and the Bu form and also the Wooden Dummy form as well. We won't be posting those on YouTube though. Um, so, to start out with, all of the details in the Sunum Tao form that we will be using for the movements that we have in this uh, workout, you can find the details for those in my Sunum Tao playlist where we go over each movement in the Sunum Tao form in detail. So if you don't know how to do a specific movement, go reference that for the details, and here I'm just showing the movement that we're doing and how many repetitions and some uh, ways to do it so that it kind of flows nicely in repetition. So in the form, we don't do multiple hewn styles in a row, but for the exercise, we will. And I'll show you how to do that. So the first exercise is going to be the very first part of the form. So learn how to open your stance from watching that other video I told you about. And then having this sequence, we're gonna do this 50 times in a row. So I do a cross tan sao, a cross gan sao, and I wanna do that with some force and then it relaxes and comes back up to the cross tonsil position again. I make fists and then I pull that back. This pulling back motion with the fists, you wanna make sure you pull that all the way back so that your forearms are parallel to the floor. There's some space between your forearm and your body and it's not resting on your body. And this should be stretching out your chest so that your uh, body gets more flexible in the front part of your body. But it also works the muscles in the back to be able to keep a good, uh, more straight posture from this position. So you'll do 50, five, zero repetitions of this, where you go here, up, and back, that's one. And then you go two, three, and you do 50 of those. I won't do all 50 because this will make a long video if I do that. But you go one, two, three, Actually, there's four parts. One, two, three, four. Make sure you really stretch that back. And then it goes up and back. So that's exercise number one. Exercise number two will be the Hyun Sao, the circling hand movement. And so the sequence of the workout goes in the sequence of the form. So if you can remember the sequence of the form, it kind of gives you a clue for which movement comes next and it helps you remember what you're doing. So the way this starts, we start from the punch from the form. The hand will open flat, palm up. I bend my hand backwards towards myself so that my fingers are pointing back at me. I rotate my wrist down while my hand is still bent. My elbow stays locked out. My fingers are pointing back towards me. I make a fist here and continue the circle the rest of the way around. So that would be one. And we're gonna do 50 of these, but now I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And the way I do that from here, I open my hand, turn my palm outside my body, bend my hand backwards, rotate the other direction, make a fist and lay it flat here, and then that would be number two. I open my hand from there and I do the first part again, circle around, make a fist, comes in number three, open, turn out, pull back, circle, make a fist number four, then you do five, six, seven. You can kind of do these fast until you do 50 of those on one side. Then after you've done 50, then you do the other side. One, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 50. In fact, if you do 51, 50 will get you into this position where your thumb is on top. 50, yeah, so 50 will get you into that position. 51 will get you into the position like you are in the form before you pull it back. So if you do an odd number, you'll actually be where you want to be in the form to pull it back to the next movement. So that's the Hyun Sao. And that's really good for stretching the wrist and building these muscles on the inside of the forearm, really stretching the muscles on the outside of the forearm, getting that flexibility and range of motion in the wrist joint. That's really important in Wing Chun when we do our punching. So you want to have that flexibility here, and that's a really good exercise for that. So that is the Hyun Sao, 50 on the left and 50 on the right. Okay, so the next part of the form we come to is this Tan Sao with the three Fuk Sao sequences. 
And any time in the form you repeat a movement a number of times, that was probably an important movement that they wanted you to repeat a few times to get a lot of practice on it. So we're going to do some repetitions of that. And so starting out with the Tong Sao, and again, check the other uh, videos that I'll leave a link in the uh, description below so you can find that to tell you the details on how this movement works. But what we're going to do, instead of doing 50 of these, because that'll take forever, we do 10 of these. So you, this will relax, and then you push out, rolls up and back. This will be number two. Push out, roll up and back. Number three. And you can also do this if you know the Qigong Sunim Tao that we have in our uh, organization. You can take in a deep breath in through your nose and then exhale out through your mouth as you push out. And this is how you can just get one repetition of breath while you do it. Breathe in through your nose as you pull in. Breathe out through your mouth as you push out. Breathe in through your nose as you pull in. And that will make this a very slow movement but you get to practice this deep breathing exercise, breathing in through your nose, still breathing in through your nose, breathe out through the mouth as you push out, still breathing out through the mouth, breathe in through the nose as you pull it back, breathe out through the mouth as you push forward, 10 of those on the left side, and then you have 10 of those on the right side. So you count 10 Fuk Saos. The first Tan Sao you don't count, but you count one as a fuxiao, and then two, and you do 10 of those. And then at the end, you can finish it like you would in the form where you palm to the side, palm forward, stretch that, and then you pull that back. So that is the 10 fuxiaos that we have in this, as this exercise. So the next exercise is the sideward gum sao that we do at the next movement in the form after we've done the fuxiaos. So you can do this a few different ways. You can do one side, 50 times in a row, back and forth, or you can do it alternating sides. Uh, so if you were doing 50 on one side, you would want to do 50 on the other side. If you're going to alternate sides each time, count to 100, where you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 100, and that will still give you 50 on both sides. When you do this, try to make sure that your elbow pushes the hand down, you're pulling up and back on the hand and the wrist to really stretch the opposite things that the hewn cell stretches. And it builds the opposite muscles that the hewn cell builds. So you need to have both of these kind of movements where you have palm striking techniques and you have hewn cell techniques where you bend one way and you bend the other to counterbalance those stretching exercises. So this is a good one to practice to get that repetition in of pulling that wrist back this way. So do a hundred of these, switching sides, or one at a time, 50 times, and then 50 on the other side. The next exercise is the backward gum sow, which is from the back of your body, your thumbs and your index fingers are touching each other. Your elbows are in as far as you can get them, and you're going to palm back away from yourself with your fingers still pointing at you and then it comes back and you do 50 of these. When you do this part of the, the exercise, or you do this exercise, try to keep a good straight posture so that you're not leaning forward like this. You wanna have a good posture standing up straight, looking straight ahead, not to the side one way or the other, but looking straight ahead, just like at the end of the part of the form, and you go one. Every palm you do is another count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to 50. And after that, it'll come up, and then you have the forward gum sow. And that'll be the next uh, technique. So the next movement is the forward gum sow. So it starts right after that part of the form where you do the backward gum sow. Your hands come up, and you want that stretched back as far as you can so that you palm forward the wrists pulled back, the fingers are straight, the arms are pretty much parallel to each other, and then you want to retract them back up that same line that you thrusted forward on, and you do 50 of those, where this would be one, two, three, four, five, you do 50 of those, but when you do this, and this is true for all of the 
uh, exercises that we have in the Sinum Tau workout, in all of the workouts, make sure you do them correctly. If you're doing a high number of repetitions, you want to ingrain proper technique and not do 50 bad movements, then you now have to train that bad movement out of your body. So when you do this forward gum sow, it's important that you push with your elbow and not hammer, hinging at the elbow. I want to thrust my hand forward and down with my elbow pushing behind it. I don't want it to have this arcing motion in the wrist. I want my elbow to thrust forward so that my palm travels in a straight diagonal line forward and then travels along that same line back up. So to count again, this would be one, two, three. And you would like to do this with some force, like you're trying to strike with it. It's not exactly a strike in application, but you do want to practice that kind of force coming from this palm position. And again, you're really stretching on that wrist when you do this. So 50 of those. Okay, so the next movement is the fox owl, which is this part of the form. So we're gonna do 50 of those, and we're gonna start with the left hand on top, and you're gonna strike out, and then when you bring it back, the right hand is on top. Strike out, bring it back, the left hand is on top. Each time you do this, bring the other hand back on top, so you're not just doing one kind of lopsided movement the whole time, and then if you were to do the other side, it would be kind of lopsided this way. Try to equalize both by alternating which side comes out on top each time you do it. So this would be one, and then two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 50 of those. You'll really feel that working on your trap muscles up here. Um, be careful with this technique where when you strike this out, make sure that your elbows lead and that you strike in this direction and don't hyperextend your elbow backwards. So try to go more to the side with it when you do this technique. So be careful with that one. And so you have 50 of those. Okay, so the next te technique is the Buji style, which is this thrusting fingers arm. This is to practice having this relaxed kind of force when you strike. And so the sequence is gonna be where you strike out, then you're gonna do a jut sow to pull the hands back, and then strike again. So you do one, two, three, up to 50 of those. And try to keep the hand really relaxed, the fingers are relaxed, but they're still pointing straight, so it's like an arrow shooting out, all the way out, and then it relaxes. And the wrist and the forearm and the hand all stay straight. Don't bend it and then end up thrusting down. I want my arm to be straight like an arrow. So when I strike, it has this kind of force penetrating through the fingertips all the way out. And so you do this towards the height of your eyes if you're looking at a mirror in front of you. So it should be at this height. It's not straight out. It's definitely not down, that's obvious. I'm going kind of high with it. And you do 50 of those. So each strike is one, two, three, four, all the way to 50. So that's the Buji Sao, thrusting fingers arm. So immediately after the Buji Sao in the form, you have the long bridge gum Sao and the Tai Sao. And so we're gonna do repetitions of the Tai Sao movement. So starting from the strike from the Buji Sao, you're gonna press the hands down, keeping your elbows fully extended, and your hands end up parallel to each other, parallel to the floor, and then the hands relax, and you pick your wrists up to your chin, and that would be one repetition. Pushes down to the belt, lifts up to the chin, that would be two. Every Tai Sao lifting hand that you do is a count. So you can do this fairly quickly, and 50 might not feel like a lot. Uh, you may feel like you can do 100 of these. As many as you want to do, that's what you do. So one, two, three, four, and try to have your wrist lead the movement, kind of like the Karate Kid painting the fence up and down. Push down, lift up, push down, lift up, and just try to keep this soft while keeping the elbow fully extended 
you're really hinging from the shoulder here. And I'm not pulling this back hard and tight when I lift, I'm just keeping it relaxed as I lift it. Same thing on the other side, you're doing both at the same time. Keeping the elbows fully extended, don't let this happen. Keep the arms extended out as you do the Thai Sao Long Bridge Gum Sao. Pressing down, you can kind of feel this in your pecs a little bit when you do that. And then you lift it up, the chest relaxes, you feel that lifting in the, uh, the deltoids a little bit. And so after you do a few of those, you'll start to feel that really in your deltoids. And so 50 again may not be enough for you to feel any kind of uh, burn in this, but the coordination that you're getting from this movement is really good to train. So one, uh, 50 of those or 100 of those, how many you want to do? So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then at the end, you can do the reverse hewn sow and pull that back, however you want to finish it. But there's 50 of those, and then you're done with that part. So that's usually where I end the exercise. And then we would end with one minute of air punching. So you would just set a timer for a minute and start punching nonstop for a full minute. Or if you wanted to continue on with the form, there are movements that you can practice, like these palms. And you do chain horizontal palms. You can do that. You can also practice this movement in the Sunim Tao form after you've done the Jum, Wat, Lao Sao, lower lying palm. You can go back up high. This is a difficult movement to practice going from a high position to palming low and thrusting with that elbow. That can take some practice, so that might be something that you can do 50 repetitions of this on each side. So you have these other exercises that you can kind of figure out for yourself. Movements in the forms that have kind of a stretching quality to it and figure out how to do repetitions of it. The more repetitions you do of certain movements, the better you get at them, obviously. So practice those things, like this for example. This stretch obviously would take some practice. It's kind of weird to do that in repetition, but you can practice one hand at a time, going to taun sao, bend it down, thrust, taun sao, bend down, thrust, you can do 50 of those. You can also do the tut sao movement at the end and practice having this go with force, doing 100 of those so that you have 50 on both sides. So you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 50. And then again at the end, because the very end of the form is always chain punching, do a minute of air punching, get that really stretched out, and that would be the end of the Sunim Tao workout. So as often as you want to go through that, um, the more you do it, the better you'll get at your forms, and you'll be better at these particular movements that you do repetitions of. Repetition is the key to getting good at anything that you do. So take these movements out of the form, practice repetitions of them, and then you can plug those movements back into the form so the next time you do the movement, it's just that much more practiced and refined. So that's the end of the Sunim Tao workout.